was a nice response. Okay. <laughs> you know. And so, are some of you doing okay? Good. Yes. Good. Good. I'm glad to hear it. I don't have an awful lot of announcements, and I know many of you that that's going to bring a lot of joy because you don't have to sit here and listen to me drone on. So, uh, if that's you, then you can just you know have a little inside applause for that. I don't need to hear it. Okay. Or okay, go ahead. Outside oh, wow. applause. Kristen's not going to talk. <laughs> And here she is talking about not talking. Go figure. Kurt, would you like to make an announcement? I would love to. See, I'm on cup of coffee number three, so I'm ready to make some announcements. So, okay. Well, first of all, if you would like to help out, as you know, we like to reach out to the community and tell people about the village. So, if you are somebody who enjoys <coughs> handing people a cup of water at a community event, or marching in parades or doing fun stuff like that and you want to help get the word out about the village i am our outreach team chair and we would love to have you join the outreach team come up with some new fun ways to be able to serve the community and spread the word about the village the other thing i want to talk about i'm hoping everybody in this room has heard there's a tiny little problem with the water up in flint michigan everybody heard about that right Come on, the coffee is wonderful out there. It'll wake you up or we got great tea. But anyway, all right. Well, we're trying to do something about that here in Toledo and other communities around the Midwest. So next Saturday, the 30th, between 7 a.m. and 2 p.m., Councilwoman Yvonne Harper and the Toledo Police Patrolman's Association are collecting bottles of water to take it up to Flint. Unlike our water crisis, which was a week, this has been going on now for quite some time, and the water is not going to change quickly up there. They need all the help they can get. So, if you are willing to go out and buy some bottled water, collect it up. Uh, the Toledo Police Patrolman's Association is at 1947 Franklin, which if you know downtown area at all, it's over by Manos in the attic off of Adams. They are going to be there from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. collecting bottles of water. They will get it up to the folks in Flint, and unlike some people, they're not gonna have a morals test so on who they give it out to. They're gonna give it out to people in need. There are actually some people where you have to be morally straight or whatever in order to get the water. That's not how they're doing this. They're gonna get this to people in need up in Flint. So if you're interested in helping out, please donate, and thank you very much. All righty, let's worship. Please stand. Let's start by singing a nice upbeat wake you up song, Days of Elijah. <laughs>
continue singing with Your Grace is Enough.
it came true just now in this place. We pray with you. beginning of Jesus' ministry from the Gospel of John's perspective. John told the story of Jesus turning water into wine as a sign of God's extravagant love. This week we turn to Luke's Gospel. Luke has a different story about how Jesus' ministry began. And isn't that how it is with a family? Everybody remembers the stories a little bit differently. One person remembers one story, and another person remembers another story of how it all began. In Luke's Gospel, we get Jesus' first sermon. Some call it his inaugural address. I had the privilege of hearing President Obama's inaugural address during his second inauguration. In person, along with a few hundred thousand other people on the Capitol lawn, in his address, Obama laid out his plans and his dreams for our country. His vision was big and bold. He was filled with great ideas that day. No worry about Congress and whether or not they would cooperate. When you're giving an inaugural address, it's all about hope and the future and how we're going to get there together, right? Jesus gave the same kind of inaugural address. But all he had to do was read scripture. You see, it was the Sabbath, and he was in his hometown of Nazareth. He went to the meeting place, the synagogue, and he was asked to read scripture in much the same way Kristen read our scripture today. It was the appointed text for the day. He didn't choose it. The text was from Isaiah, and it was filled with promise and hope and a bright hope for the future much like President Obama's inauguration speech. Jesus read these words. God's spirit is on me. God has chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor. God sent me to announce pardon to prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the burdened and battered free, to announce this is God's year to act. Now remember, this was a reading from Isaiah, but when Jesus closed the scroll, he did an amazing thing. He said, you've just heard this scripture make history. It came true now in this place. What? What did he say? He said that he was the one who would do these things. He said he was God's servant who would turn the world upside down. That must have caused quite a stir, don't you think? So let's unpack what he said just a little bit. He came to preach good news to the poor, to announce pardon to the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set the burdened and battered free. David Lowe's writes this. What is striking, if you listen closely, is that the good news is only good if you're willing to admit what is hard in your life what is lacking, what has been most difficult. This is not good news in general, but good news for the poor. It's not released, but released to those who are captive, sight to those who are blind, freedom to those who are oppressed. So in order for us to receive these blessings from Jesus, we have to admit that we are not perfect. We are in need of blessing. This is sometimes hard for us to do because we live in a culture that calls us to pretend that everything is perfect with our lives, right? That we have it all together. 
television, the internet, advertisements all tell us we're supposed to be thin and beautiful and fit. We're supposed to eat healthily and raise perfect children. We're supposed to have the perfect job and work hard and get a promotion and get a raise so that we can buy the perfect house and live in the perfect neighborhood and have perfect friends. What an illusion. Who can live up to that? Can you? Raise your hand. Anybody? Anybody? Jesus came to remind us that we are all imperfect. We are all broken and in need of the grace of God. So in his inaugural sermon, he talked about those things. He said, if you're blind to certain things, I will give you sight. How about you? What are you blind to? What do you need to see more clearly? Is it a relationship that's not right? A job situation where you need to stand up for yourself? Are you blind to an injustice that you participate in? Do you have a blind spot that prevents you from seeing something right in front of you that everyone around you is trying to get you to see? Jesus said, I came to give sight to the blind, so he will give sight to our blind spots. Jesus will help us see those hard things within ourselves and around us that we don't want to see. If we just ask, Jesus will show us what he wants us to see. Next, Jesus came to give good news to the poor. How are you poor? You might be financially poor. If so, Jesus wants to come and bring you hope. Like Obama in his inaugural address gave a vision for how we can lift people out of poverty in this country, Jesus does not want people to live in poverty. He wants us to have a fair living wage and health care for all and job training so we can all provide for our families. He wants us to help one another so that no one has to live in poverty in this world. But there are many ways to be poor, aren't there? Are you poor in spirit? Do you feel beaten down by this life? Jesus wants to lift you up. Jesus came to bring us the good news that we belong to God and that God loves us. Are you poor because you're without hope and you're discouraged? Jesus wants to bring you good news. You're not alone. God is with you. God has a dream for your life. God has a purpose for your life, a reason why you were put on this earth. Your job is to discover that purpose and to live it out. That is the good news. If you're feeling poor in spirit, remember that you're not poor because you belong to God. Jesus also came to announce pardon to the prisoners. Do you ever feel like you're living in a prison? What does that prison feel like? Is your prison guilt for something you have done? Or for something you have failed to do? Remember, we're all imperfect people. We've all made mistakes. Jesus came to tell us that we are forgiven. This is a big one, my friend. So many of us walk around burdened by guilt and shame. We are prisoners to our guilt and shame. Jesus says to us, you are forgiven. In the name of God, you are forgiven. Whatever you did or failed to do, it cannot separate you from the love of God. Let it go. God forgives you. It's time to forgive yourself. Finally, Jesus came to set the battered and the burdened free. Do you feel battered by the world? Are you weighed down by your burdens? This is a tough one, too. Life is hard. The longer we live, the longer we have to collect all those burdens. It's like you're carrying burdens around in a big sack and you're just dragging it behind you. 
Jesus came to, to take away that sack of worries and woes and to set us free. Take a deep breath with me. Imagine what it would feel like to just give your burdens over to Jesus. Just let them go and let him have them. He wants to take them. He doesn't want you to be beaten down any longer. Jesus wants to set us free, so take him at his word. Be free. Jesus made this inaugural sermon, and then he sat down. We don't know for sure if the people took it to heart. We don't know the stories of the people who heard it and how they lived their individual lives from that day forward, but we know how we can live our lives the sermon reminds us that we have to own up to our imperfections. We need to stop hiding behind the idea that we can be perfect. God knows we're not. What a relief. We can let down our guard and allow Jesus to care for us. So that is our gift today. Jesus sets us free from our imperfections. In the Christian church, we have a tradition of confession. In prayer, we confess to God our sins, our shortcomings, and our failings. It helps to cleanse the soul when we name our sins to God. Of course, God already knows, but it helps us to come clean with God. When we confess our sins, we remember that Jesus came not for the perfect, but for the imperfect. He came not for the healed, but for the broken. He came not for the righteous, but for the unrighteous. He came not for the saint, but for the sinner. When we confess our sins, we always end our prayers with what we call the absolution. We say, in the name of God, you are forgiven. This is the reminder that we are forgiven because, you see, God always forgives us. God loves us, and it's God's nature to forgive. So we're going to respond to the message today with a prayer of confession. I invite you to pray it with me. Ollie, I'd like you to put it up on the screen. Let's pray together. Holy God, we confess that we are imperfect people. We have done things we wish we had not done, and we have failed to do things we wish we had done. We are poor in spirit, we fail to draw near to you. We are blind to the injustice in our community and our world. We are prisoners to our own poor choices. We carry our burdens like a badge of honor rather than giving them over to you so we might live as free people. And now, O oh God, we confess our private sins to you in silence.
got surgery went well. But it wasn't even a surgery, it was a cardiac procedure, and Rock is west resting well. And they want to thank the congregation for their support uh, through uh, the procedure and for all the prayers and support of the congregation. <coughs> Matt asked for prayers for the family of Eric Ramlo, who passed away following a bicycle accident. So we want to pray for Eric's family. And Sarah says, uh, please pray for Marty's nephew, Aaron, who has developed partial paralysis from transverse myelitis. Uh, we're hoping for, for a full recovery for um, Aaron. So please pray for Aaron. Let's pray together. Living God, in this season of cold days and long nights, we are tempted to hibernate and to withdraw to a warm, safe space. We need to recoup our strength and reorganize our priorities. Our inner fire needs to be fed. You, God, are the only source from which we can draw strength that we need. Come to us in this season of hidden growth. Invigorate us with the vitality of your spirit. Energize us with your love. Equip us with the power to serve you. God, we pray for those in our community who are suffering this day. For those sick in body, mind, and spirit. Send your healing mercies. We pray for those who are weighed down by burdens. God, let us be free. We pray for those who are imprisoned in various ways, for those who can't see clearly, and for the poor in spirit. God, heal us from these maladies. Make us whole. Finally, God, we give you thanks. You bless us, and we forget to say thank you. Help us to begin and end each day with a prayer of thanks. Give us grateful hearts. We thank you for your love, for peace in our hearts, and for the joy of serving you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll receive our offering now for the ministries of this church. As the basket is passed, we invite you to place your gifts in the basket. If you're not putting anything in the basket today, perhaps you give electronically. We still invite you to touch the basket, to bless the gifts that are given, and to give thanks for the many blessings in your own life. Thank you. 